Hey, everybody. Before we start the formal we'll prayer, we'll, in a very informal but heartfelt way, join in spirit with those people who are affected by Hurricane Helena, especially those who are still missing their friends and relatives. The horror of losing your possessions is one thing, but the horror of losing your family and friends, I can't even imagine. So let us pray. As you probably know, when you woke up this morning, if you looked at your calendar, today's the last day of September. Woo. And tomorrow, obviously, is the first day of October. And so I was looking at what is the spirituality of the month of October? And that's really what we're going to reflect on this morning. In general, the spirituality, the way that we're invited to, re to uh, connect with God and all of creation, is that, that October is a time of profound transformation, especially for those in the Midwest. One thing I learned about the East, that this is a time when avocados and almonds come to flower. So you do have some thing happening dramatically in the weather, in nature, in the West. And so we shed vibrant colors at the end of summer in preparation for the darkness of winter. And this natural process, it, it's natural. It just, cycle keeps going and going. This natural process encourages us to during this month of October, reflect on our own lives, letting go of our old ways to make way for the new. And one of the intriguing things is that this, transform this transformative time of the year is common to many cultures. And so, especially to many world religions. And we are looking at what does it mean to live and to pray interculturally so we can truly be connected with, with one and each other and so one of the things that's significant about October is there are very many religious festivals. And these are just a couple. One is called Samhain, and it's an ancient Celtic festival marking the harvest and the thinning of the veil between the physical and the spiritual worlds. You know, the, the, in Celtic spirituality, they talk about the thin points, the thin points where everything really seems one. That's what this festival celebrates. It's a time for um, venerating our ancestors and also reflecting on letting go. This festival gave birth to our festival of Halloween. And Halloween costumes are our ritual way of putting on a costume and taking it off at the end of Halloween. The Hindus also celebrate a major festival in October, and it's called Mahaklaya. And it's the Hindu word for to celebrate the victory of the goddess Dinga over evil forces. And it's a time of great, great color celebrations. So colorful smoke, colorful flowers. And in some villages, they lay flowers on the roads. Maybe you've seen them. 
patterns of all different colored flowers on the road to celebrate the end of darkness and the deepening of spirituality in absence of beauty. This one's much more common to us. Judaism celebrates the Feast of Sukkot. And basically it commemorates when Yahweh sheltered the Israelites in the wilderness. And all they had was sticks and leaves. So maybe if you live near a Jewish community, a Hebrew community, you've seen a building of the shelter, the sukkah, you know, and the Jewish people, the Hebrew people gather and pray in these temporary shelters. It's made me think of what's going on in Israel, Palestine, and Gaza right now, where God knows how many people are sheltering in temporary shelters. And so basically this feast commemorates the symbolism in the reality that God, no matter what, does protect us. And so finally, we Catholic Christians celebrate the feast of St. Francis of Assisi. And that's a universal feast where we celebrate our love of animals. Some of us love them a whole lot. Some, come see, come saw, meaning the pets, but especially all of creation. And basically St. Francis of Assisi and this feast invites us to reflect on the glories of creation. And one of the things that happens in both Protestant and uh, Catholic churches is on the Feast of St. Francis, we bless the pets. So if the entire world is celebrating the shift from one season to another, whether it's from summer to fall, or we're in the middle of spring into winter, the whole world is invited to connect with the changing seasons and to embrace the unknown reality of both life and death in our own spiritual journeys. So I'm inviting you now to breathe in life and breathe out death. Breathe in life and breathe out death. To breathe in new life. Breathe out death. And before I put the closing prayer, or Bob puts the closing prayer on the screen, I'd invite you to take about two minutes and to pray and look back on this year for you and just see if you can come in contact with the one or two areas where you are harvesting something. What are you bringing during this end of September and the beginning of October? What are you bringing to the God of harvest?
going to put the closing prayer on the screen. And I would invite Linda Fox and Terry to unmute yourselves and pray each alternating verse, if you're able and willing to do that. And so we pray, Linda first. God of the seasons, there is a time for everything. There is a time for dying and a time for rising. We need courage to enter into the transformation process. God of autumn, the trees are saying goodbye to their green, letting go of what has been. We too have our moments of surrender with all their insecurity and risk. Help us to let go when we need to do so. God of fallen leaves, lying in colored patterns on the ground. Our lives have their own patterns. As we see the patterns of our growth, may we learn from them. God of misty days and harvest moon nights, there is always the dimension of mystery and wonder in our lives. We always need to recognize your power-filled presence. May we gain strength from this. God of harvest wagons and fields of ripened grain, many gifts of growth lie within the season of our surrender. Grant us patience when we do not see the harvest. God of geese going south for another season. Your wisdom enables us to know what needs to be left behind and what needs to be carried forth. We yearn for insight and vision. God of flowers touched with frost and windows wearing white designs. May your love keep our hearts from growing cold in the empty seasons. And so gracious and loving God, let the darkening days, the chill of a fall night, and the smell of fallen leaves remind us of the changing seasons and the passing of time, the changing of our seasons and the passing of our time. Grant us the wisdom to not take the precious gift of time for granted or any of the many other gifts you have given us. Rather, awaken in us a keen sense of how short is the time in which to sow seeds of a bountiful harvest. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so may you have a wonderful week, and may you walk wherever there are crunchy leaves or something that reminds you of uh, the changing seasons. See you Wednesday. Bye. Thank you. That Thank was a lovely you, prayer. Thank Beautiful. you. Thank you, Carol. Thanks, Carol.